Welcome to this SaaS Masterclass. In this course, we're going to take you from zero to hero through a step-by-step -step process that will allow you to get all the information available regarding the software as a service business, okay? So in case you wanted to start your own profitable software as a service in 2021, you could do that, but you need to be aware of so many things such as what to start between a B2B versus a B2C or a vertical versus an horizontal SaaS. You will understand what I think it is the best thing to do for you in terms of choosing whether the vertical or the horizontal one based on my experience and uh, you will learn tons of things such as what is an LTV, what is a CAC, what is the churn rate, what is the freemium model, and so on and so forth. Let me just share, share with you what we'll go through. Perhaps these are some of the slides so that you can have a look. But I really hope that you will get inside of this course because I've really put so much passion and experience into this and I feel like you will have it too. So having said that, let's get started and I hope to see you to the other side. Welcome everyone. In this first lecture, we're going to talk about what is a SaaS business. This software as a service business model that we keep hearing about in TV shows, in meetings, in conferences, we read on books and podcasts and social media and so on and so forth. Now, there is a reason for that because it has been trending so much lately. And as you can see from this screenshot taken from Google Trends, uh, the interest towards the SaaS business has really skyrocketed in the last 10 years or so, and it's really nearly tripled. And that makes it really interesting. This is the worldwide uh, search for the term SaaS, software as a service. And as you can see, it has, is, uh, it has spiked a lot, especially since 2014, uh, nearly doubled. And yeah, I just want to let you know that. But first, let's go through what this SaaS business model is. As you've said, it is a subscription based software that runs on the cloud. Okay, that's it. You know, I don't want to make complicated definitions. You know, I don't want you to, uh, to get confused. It is that simple. It is a software. Okay, that is the sold via subscription instead of being sold as a, you know, as a one, one, one shot payment. Okay, that usually is really, really expensive of multiple thousands of dollars. So in this case, instead, you're just paying for the license. Okay, you are kind of renting the software. Okay, you're not paying for the software, you're renting the software. So you are going to use it like pay as you go, uh, you know, structure. And when you don't feel like using it anymore, you're going to, you know, you're going to stop paying for that and you're going to unsubscribe from it. So it, we are in this subscription economy and more and more things are turning into subscription. As you, we can see, we're consuming uh, media and, um, you know, through subscription, entertainment through subscription, like on Netflix, you know, uh, we're sub, you know, consuming music through subscription like Spotify. You know, we have subscription on Amazon for, you know, uh, yearly, you know, Amazon Prime that allows us to get uh, our, our items shipped the next day. So there's so many things that are based on subscription. Like me as a marketer, I've got so many uh, web, you know, like, uh, <laughs> like softwares as a, sub a subscription, you know, like Ubersuggest, SEMrush, href all of this uh, um you know digital marketing software that are really really useful for marketers so there's tons of software as a services out there and they're growing uh, every single day and yeah it was great that uh, that that we could uh, give a definition to it because people might have been wondering so if you didn't understand yet it's really kind of like a software that it's just sold through a subscription okay it is a subscription based software and you can you can pay a monthly subscription uh, like uh, a yearly subscription you know it's up to you usually when you pay a yearly subscription it it's uh, it saves you like 20 percent on the price and uh, a lot of company do that companies do that because they want to extend the lifetime value of the customer so they're willing to to make a discount as long as they have like a yearly commitment you know a six months commitment uh, like a yearly be yearly commitment so yeah, that's what you are going to get. But I just wanted to give a quick definition. So it is a subscription based software that runs on the cloud. And this concept of the cloud is so good because it allows you to log into your SaaS. All right. If you're a customer, wherever you want, you can log from your phone, you can log from your tablet, you can log from your desktop. Okay. 
you can log so, so for your laptop as well anywhere you are as long as you've got an internet connection that's it you just need your email address okay and your password as so you need your credentials and you're in and that's so good and it's also really powerful for the entrepreneurs for the for the business because it allows to deploy changes it deploy updates every single time easily you know you do not have to send uh, emails to your customer and say hey there's a new uh, there's a new version that you should be you know downloading like you do with apps you know do you remember with apps you constantly have to update the you know in the past you constantly had to update you know the version like at version 1.0 then 2.0 3.0 now you know you don't have to do this with the SaaS you know software so that you are going to get everything updated directly so as we will see in the next lectures there's a lot of pros uh, you know a lot of benefits of, of building a SaaS business also using a SaaS business versus uh, the few cons of uh, building a SaaS and using a SaaS so yeah we will see to the next lectures and in the next lecture we're going to see the difference between a B2B versus a B2C SaaS and in the other next lectures we're going to uh, see the difference between vertical and horizontal SaaS all right, so in this lecture, we will focus on the pros and cons of the SaaS business model, okay? So let's get started with the pros. And the first one that comes to my mind is that it is easy to implement, update, and debug. So if you're thinking about building a SaaS company, you are going to take this in mind. It is really easy to implement, update, and debug. So once you update it on your network, it will be auto automatically updated on every uh, on each and one of your customer's network okay so you won't have to do it manually you won't have to send uh, you know an downloadable uh, update package okay it will be easily updated and debugged then it is accessible from anywhere that is the great thing that we've already mentioned but we need to say it again you can access to your SaaS if you are a consumer from anywhere okay if you're the consumer but also if you are managing a small SaaS you know uh, if you if you just wanted to look for your uh, for for your users and see what they're doing real time it's easy you just look at the back end and you can log in if, via your web and uh, you're gonna easily see if you're again the developer what your user are doing from anywhere in the world and also your users can just access and do their do their stuff from you know from a bit from uh, from anywhere from from Asia from the U.S. from from their home you know can do it inside their car anywhere the anywhere they are so they can access from their laptop mobile phones you know uh, tablet so on and so forth so it's really uh, easy to access from anywhere then it is cost effective which means that it is both cost effective to develop it and also to um, to, you know to subscribe to it as a consumer because the great thing about it for the consumer is that you do not have to purchase a license you know like a big license you know like a, uh, like a five ten thousand dollar license um, you will have to pay for a, a small monthly fee okay and that is of course depending on which kind of uh, SaaS you are uh, opting in but uh, it, you know, usually for a marketing SaaS is around thirty to forty dollars per month. Instead, in the in the old days, you would have to pay like five to ten thousand dollars, you know, just to downloading the software. Okay, so you so right now what you're doing basically is you're renting the software. Okay, you're renting by paying a small fee, a small license. Whereas in the past you used to pay for the service. You would you would buy the software. Okay. So right now it's like if you're renting, you know, leasing it, whereas before you were supposed to be paying for it. So you were buying it, which is definitely a lot more expensive. Then it is giving you a predictable recurring revenue if you are the owner of the SaaS, okay? Which is awesome. Who wouldn't want to have a predictable recurring revenue? Every single month you are able to know what your, in, your inflows are. Of course, you're going to have a churn rate. The churn rate is the amount of uh, it's kind of like how much people uh, are dropping off okay how much cost how many customers are dropping are dropping off every single month and that is going to be a percentage two three four percent okay the higher the worse the lower the better 
and you can see that and you can try to adjust that but of course if you have a churn rate but you also have an intake rate so the the, the ones that you are going to acquire every single month hopefully the difference between the inflow and the outflow of customer is positive so that you can grow everything single month and that's the great thing because that allows you to scale it is really easy to scale and uh, of course if you have a positive you know positive um, customer life you know lifetime value the cost of acquisition is slow you're gonna be able to scale we're gonna talk about it about it in the next lectures by the way customer lifetime value cl uh, ltv and um, uh, cac customer acquisition cost but just wanted to give you this insight it's easy to scale as long as you're profitable okay if you're not <laughs> you're not gonna be able to scale because uh, there's no need to scale if you're not profitable you're gonna just uh, uh, build yourself a hole in the ground so Having said that, let's go and look at the cons now. The cons are, is that if you have a soft software as a service business, there's gonna be usually a longer conversion fu funnel, especially if you are going to um, uh, require a freemium model. So if you're going to offer a freemium model, most of the people usually are going to, um, you know, access to the free, free, uh, to the free stuff, okay, for 14 days or 30 days, depends on what you do what you offer usually 14 days tends to be the best and, uh, and you and so after those 14 days people sometimes you can you can choose two things either you automatically renew so if they leave their their credit card they will be automatically renewed or you know if they don't leave the credit card first of course it depends on you what you decide to do as as the entrepreneur uh, they will be asked to add the credit card at the end of the 14 days period if they want to continue, if they want to renew. Or there's like a, a freemium model that you can basically use it every single day, but you will have a lot less features, you know, you'll have a lot less uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, stuff you can do on the platform and you can do all the premium stuff only if you subscribe. So, and usually this will allow, you know, increase the funnel, the conversion funnel. So it will take more days to, to convert the people into, you know, free from free to paying customers. And for those ones who didn't know, a funnel is kind of like a, it's really like a funnel. Like it's um, basically the journey that uh, go, that your customer go through from awareness, okay, to action at the end. So just from just knowing about your brand to then acting and purchasing it, okay? Not then in the middle, you got acting, but purchasing the free stuff and then in the end, so it's like it's it's used very widely in the marketing sphere. Um, the, the the sales funnel, the marketing funnels are really really important. If you want to uh, learn more about them, you can check them out on online or on YouTube. Just type uh, funnel, and tons of things are going to appear. And um, having said that, let's go to the next one. There's an increased security risks, which mean that of course, uh, uh, if you have uh, you know if your SaaS get gets hacked, it's going to be a problem because uh, there's a lot of uh, compliance issues. If, if that happens, of course, you have the data of your customers. And if those data got, gets, got le they get leaked, you know, um, by a hacker, you know, that could be a serious problem, especially now with uh, all of the policies regarding privacy and data. Um, you gotta be really careful with it. So if you build a SaaS, you gotta have an IT team just working on increasing the security because that's not good. If if really something happens, um, it could be um, in serious trouble, serious risk. So just really be careful with that. Try to uh, be as safe as possible in that in that regards. Okay, and then you gotta have lower barriers to entry for competition. That's the problem because um, building a software, yeah, of course, there's different ones. You know, like that could be something very complex, which is more difficult to to copy. But there's could, there could be something which is more of entry level, and that will uh, allow you know small players to come in and try to uh, eat your market share okay they will try to get in because build developing a software right now it's not that difficult you you can there's so many there's so many good good talented people uh, also somewhere um, you know in, in places where people from the US or from Europe can uh, you know cheaply afford to um, 
to hire and uh, they can be really really talented as well and they are really talented as well like some of the best talented came from or that i hired uh, came from you know from those places in india and they're really really good and i was so grateful to work with them and they were able to bring down the price of 10 10 times compared to what i would have paid in europe or in, in the us so um yeah so that's really good and but of course it allows for more people to get into the space so it, it's a little bit more crowded but if you're good you know competition will not matter because if you're really good you will be standing out and you will be creating a market a market for your own okay and that's that's it now i'm going to be talking about my experience with igrox.com in the next lecture which was a SaaS that i developed myself didn't go really well but this but stay tuned so that we are going to see what what i mean with that all right, so in this lecture, let's go through the differences between a B2B and a B2C SaaS. I guess some of you already know what I'm talking about, but let's just give it a quick refresh for everybody, okay? Now, a B2B SaaS is selling towards the business, okay? Whereas a B2C is selling towards the consumer, okay? B2B stands for business to business, whereas B2B, B2C stands for business to consumer, okay? So that's it. As you can see on the left hand side, you got a company, on the right hand side, you got a consumer, okay? And now let's go through some examples of B2B and of B2C companies, okay? Now we have on the left hand side, B2B SaaS, whereas on the right hand side, B2C SaaS, okay? Now, I'm sure that on the right hand side, you are probably using two of them Whereas on the left hand side, I guess it's more difficult because unless you are a company yourself, unless you are an entrepreneur, a business owner, uh, a digital marketer or a marketer uh, professional, it's gonna be difficult that you're using the one on the left hand side, but let's go through them um, each, each and every one. So on the left hand side, we've got Adobe, which is really famous for um, you know photo and video editing. They're really famous for their Photoshop, and uh, they have been the market leader since uh, uh, the, the, lane, the late 1990s. And so yeah, that's an, an example because okay, also consumers can can use uh, Adobe, but it's mainly focused towards B two B. Okay, so yeah, they are selling directly to companies. Whereas Slack is also another tool for, you know, or organizing work, you know, organizing team uh, efforts in a company. It is really good. It uh, allows people to, to stay on the same page, you know, to be updated about, uh, uh, you know, developments, about, you know, work to get done. And so that another, so Slack is another really good uh, SaaS for productivity in the B2B uh, sphere. Then we got MailChimp. MailChimp is again um, a SaaS for B2B and it is awesome at sending emails. Okay, it's an uh, email sender and it allows you to send multiple, multiple emails at the same time toward your, towards your email list. Okay, and you can really build amazing campaigns with great templates and it's uh, it's got a great pricing, you know, pay as you go and uh, based on the uh, an amount you you consume so the more emails you've got so the the more you're gonna pay but i, I remember there's a, a certain number that it's free like the first uh, i don't remember how many but the, the first few emails they're gonna be free so that's another great SaaS business for marketers it's really important because email so emails is re are really important so content by email is really important it converts a lot then we got shopify Shopify is basically a website builder, a CMS, content, man content management system like WordPress. But Shopify is a bit less complicated as, um, as, WordPress, as, as WordPress is and um, therefore it uh, allows people to, to, to get started quickly with their website, with their e-commerce source you know, with their online business. So a lot of people favor Shopify, even though I prefer WordPress because yeah, I've got a bit more control towards my SEO, towards my blog. There's a lot of plugins in there, even of course there's in Shopify, but that's, that's a topic for another day. So these are the four B2B SaaS examples I wanted to share with you. On the right hand side, instead we've got the four B2C examples and as you can see netflix and spotify i guess most of you already know and perhaps are already using yourself that is it netflix is a software okay it is a entertainment platform based on software okay 
because another entertainment platform is television, but it is not based on platform. Sorry, it's not based on the software. So as you can see, Netflix is delivering you entertainment, delivering you, you know, videos and, and movies, of course, through software. Okay, so through a subscription again, because I remember, I think it's $15 a month, right? And Spotify is like $10 a month, like $9.99. So as you can see, both of these two um, businesses are delivering value through a SaaS model, okay? Through a subscription as a service. Now, if you were the end consumer, you probably never noticed, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter because we are getting so accustomed to subscription nowadays that really people believe that we're gonna get into that subscription economy. There's been a really good book about it and I really suggest reading about, it's about the subscription economy. So you should Google it, it is amazing. And it basically talks about how everything will be turned into subscription. Even Nike is starting to sell shoes as a subscription to kids because Nike knows they're going to be getting, you know, they're gonna grow um, from kids to adults and for sure they will need different numbers. So they're providing value through a subscription for shoes, which is awesome and, and unthinkable a few years ago. And so that's it. Then we got, as we have said, Spotify. So a, a software for music. And again, based on a subscription model, B2C. And uh, we got Headspace, okay? Headspace is again, a B2C SaaS, which is focused on providing you meditation content, okay? So it will allow you to meditate, to do some really good meditation uh, sessions, some meditation lessons, and through some very short um, three, four, five minutes lessons, and it's you, you're gonna use it through an app that you're gonna download it from the App Store or the Google, um, uh, Google Store, and uh, yeah, that is um, a really good B2C example for a SaaS. Then we got Duolingo, it is a SaaS, again, providing the software through a subscription-based business, and um, it will allow you to learn languages real quick. So all of these are software as a services, perhaps you might, you might not have noticed ever, but uh, yeah, they are a lot. I mean, it doesn't change anything to you if you're the end consumer, if, if it's a SaaS or if it's not a SaaS, as long as it provides value to you and at an affordable price, I guess, um, it, it does the job. So yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. And in the next lecture, we're gonna see the differences between a vertical SaaS and an horizontal SaaS. All right, so in this lecture, we're gonna talk about the differences between a vertical and, and a horizontal SaaS. Now, a vertical SaaS is a software as a service business that caters for one specific industry and it does multiple jobs, okay? It does multiple things for that industry. It does everything for that industry, okay? And now we're going to give you some example. Whereas an horizontal SaaS does something Okay, it does only one thing for multiple industries. Okay, that's why it's it's horizontals. Okay, so it doesn't care about specific industries. It just focuses on doing one thing, and it can be replicated on every other industry. Okay, whereas as we just said, a vertical SaaS is just doing things for one industry. Okay, it has features for only one industry, like the pharmacy industry. It does everything for that. It does the CRM, it does accounting, so on and so forth, okay? Whereas an horizontal is focusing only on one feature and can that can be deployed through all the industries out there, okay? Now let's see into detail what I'm talking about so that you can comprehend. On the left-hand side, we've got the vertical SaaS, where on the right-hand side, we've got some horizontal SaaS, okay? Now, let's try to brainstorm. On the right-hand side, we got Salesforce, okay? I guess most of you know what Salesforce is. It is a CRM SaaS, okay? So CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management, and it basically allows companies, you know, to be working with the customers to define where their customers is, are in their, you know, in their, in their buyer's journey, okay? So taking them from uh, just a lead to a paying customers, you know? So it basically manages them, you know, and uh, is able to uh, to really visually see 
how the customers are, you know, into their business, you know, if they're purchasing or not, you know, if they're churning or not, if they are churning, by the way, means if they're leaving the company, you know, for a competitor or like if they are staying with them, okay, which is, by the way, a topic for one of the next lectures, churn is really important in the SaaS business, but let's not uh, digress. So on the right hand side, we got Salesforce, we got QuickBooks and we got Slack. QuickBooks is a SaaS using an online accounting, okay? Whereas Salesforce in, in CRM and Slack in online communication. As you can see, it doesn't care about any of these SaaS on the right hand side. They do not care about the industry, okay? They just focus on their, you know, on, on their features, okay? They're just focusing on what they're solving. They're solving CRM, they're solving accounting, they're solving communication, okay? That's what they're doing. They do not care about a specific industry, you know, a specific niche. Okay, that's that's what we mean by horizontal. They are doing accounting for the plumber, for the car dealer, for the real estate agent. They're do you know for the <laughs> for the you know for the pharmacy business, and that's that's it. You know, we they are not saying okay, we're doing accounting just for X, Y, and Z, or we're doing accounting just for you know auto dealerships no that's not the case they're doing accounting for any industry okay i hope that was clear and that's exactly what slack though and or and salesforce do okay that is really important and on the left hand side is that we got viva which is a SaaS used in the pharmacy business okay a texture which is used in the construction solutions all right in the construction business guidewire which is used in the insurance business and as you can see, they are doing everything for their industry. So Viva is used for the CRM, for accounting, for communication. You know, it's used for all of these things. Same for the guidewire, for, for the insurance and texture for the construction. You know, there's, that's the beauty of this. You know, there's, there's different, you know, there's different solution. You know, of course, Viva could be saying, all right, uh, sorry, in the pharmacy business, like let's say you had a pharmacy, you could say, okay, either I use Viva which is basically doing everything for what I uh, that I need. Okay, maybe not everything, but like eighty percent of what I what I need for my business. Okay, or I could go and get some CRM from Salesforce. I could get some QuickBooks, you know, accounting from QuickBooks. I could get get some you know some some you know communication from Slack and stuff, and you know. Um, they could do that or just, you know, focusing on Viva and working with them that, you know, has got 80% of the features that they need for their business, okay, to run their business, same for texture and the guidewire. So they know their industry very well. They know their target market very well. And so they've built a custom service, okay, a custom software for their customers, okay, so that they can pay them on a subscription basis, okay, so that's exactly what a vertical is. A vertical does everything for just one industry, okay, it does 80% for that industry, whereas an horizontal is doing only one thing, really, really good, and every single industry can benefit from it, as Salesforce, as Quaybooks, and Slack do. So in the next lecture, we're gonna see some of the differences, again, in the vertical and horizontal from in SaaS, but it's more in, a, in, a, in an analytical way. All right, so in this lecture, I will talk to you about my failed experiment with iGrowX.com. Uh, this was my SaaS that I've developed by myself together with a couple of freelancers we wanted to build a Google review management B2B SaaS so that uh, small business owners could uh, uh, increase their review inflow by sending links via SMS and email towards their customer in an automatic way. I mean, the software was working, it was an MVP, so I spent, uh, I didn't spend much and that was, that was good so that I kept my expenses really low. But uh, of course, um, I, the problem I was, having was that I couldn't get enough people to pay for the service. People were really, really interested in using it for free, but they were not uh, willing to pay. And my subscription was not even that expensive. It was around 19 to $29 per month for the standard package. There was a freemium model, 14 days free trial. But of course, I was struggling to get people to, to, to convert into the paying class customers. And that was not allowing me to become profitable. And as you can see, this is my homepage. 
my homepage from agroex.com. I just wanted, I don't want to do any promotion here, you know, uh, I just wanted to give you my, my example, my experience so that you can also see uh, that I have been doing this. I have, you know, have, I've had some experience in the field and uh, I'm not, I'm not just teaching it. I'm just, I really have made experience in this. And um, yeah, that was it. Start generating hundreds of reviews in a simple and effective way. People were really getting a lot of reviews. Co companies were really, really happy. But I don't know, like, I think maybe I wasn't good enough in marketing myself. Probably should have done a better job. <laughs> I mean, um, anyways, so that's, that was what happened. This is my, my sending process on the left hand side. Uh, you got all the accounts, sorry, the account detail. So your first name, last name, um, the email address, the password, and then the name used for messaging customers. That was really a good thing to have because that was the name that uh, once you sign in, people would receive your SMS, okay, your email. Um, so let's say you were a, a, a pizza shop, you would send them an, an SMS and they would, they would receive an SMS and that was the name which it was appearing. So uh, let's say I was uh, pizza, I don't know, Pizza Hut, hey, and that you would receive an SMS from Pizza Hut uh, that would say, hey, you know, let's, uh, uh, thank you for purchasing from us. Uh, would you mind letting us know how the pizza was like? Please feel free to share a review. That's it. You know, nothing, nothing really, um, nothing really uh, that, uh, that was not annoying at all. People were happy. They, they were happy to, to respond to the review and leave it a honest feedback. That was good, though I think uh, that was, I couldn't see so much potential because uh, in here in Italy where I wanted to do this, there, it started to pick up a lot of competition. So I just felt like, uh, yeah, I should have uh, <laughs> uh, stopped doing it. But anyways, uh, that was it. And here's my, my dashboard. That's where you could get all of the information. So here you had your customers. If you clicked here, that's where you go to the homepage and see the stats. Here you had some uh, educational videos regarding re reviews management. And here's where you created your template. Hey, do you mind leaving us a review? That was just a template I created by myself. And uh, just you know, as an, for the sake of, just for an, as an example, that was the preferred review website. So you could choose either Google or Yelp and you would just select them, like paste your, your link that uh, you had, um, that you had uh, um, yeah, that w your Google My Business review link. So where people will be sent once they click on the link on the SMS and, uh, or on the email. And that was the, the Yelp. So um, that was the Yelp. So you could choose either one. And, and here is where you added your customers so that you would automatically send them the review request by SMS or by email. So that was it. Um, didn't, as I said, it didn't really work out to me. Um, I think the problem was that uh, um, I was not focusing on a vertical market. That was it, the problem. It was a horizontal market because I was like, okay, uh, who can be my target customers? Who will be paying for this? And I was like, well, restaurant owners, auto dealers, hotels, you know, uh, flower shop, uh, uh, pizza shop, like uh, dentists, anyone could pay for this because anyone needs reviews. So that was more of a horizontal market, but it needed me, like I had to spend a lot of money on, on, on marketing it. I did like spend quite a few on ads. If that were really good, because I, I, I like to do, and I'm pretty good at doing uh, YouTube ads, uh, Google ads, display ads. I was really getting the cost per click down to four cents, three cents, got in getting so much engagement and traffic, but really not many people converting. So I feel back, I feel that back then in Italy, there were no, um, there were no, there were no, there, were, there was no offering in this in this regard. There's no kind of solution for that problem. People just pretended to get more reviews by paying them, just by purchasing via, you know, like uh, not legit services, like, you know, you would pay for reviews, but that's not what I offer, of course. So they would go there. They didn't even know there was like anything like this. Whereas in the USA, there was, uh, of course, a few companies already doing this. So I'm not saying I copied them, but I just modeled took some of the features that I did, I developed them myself and um, kind of catered more towards the Italian market. And then of course I saw that it wasn't working there. So I switched and that's why I changed my language and now you can see it's in English. But um, but yeah, um, I think my, my suggestion to you, if you do not have big budgets, 
to start if you want of course start your SA, uh, software as a service you know it doesn't mean you should i mean but if you're thinking about starting it again you can hire somebody on fiverr on, on appwork.com work that with them as a freelancer but i would do the mvp the minimal viable product i have created a course entirely for that if you want to check it out it's free and um yeah you can check it out it's you should create your minimal viable product with as little money as possible like i did you know i i spent less than three thousand dollar and um, of course for somebody could be a lot for somebody could be a um, little but uh you know, of course, that was good that I didn't spend more develop, develop, developing, you know, I wanted to develop three or four features more, but I said, okay, let's first see if these couple of features will be fine, the people will like this because um, if they don't even like these two features and they're, willing not, they're not willing even to pay at least $19 per month, then, you know, there's no point developing the other ones. There would be just an ex way, like a waste of money. So that was good that I didn't do it and... Um, Anyways, I've learned a ton. If any one of you, by the way, is interested in purchasing this uh, software, the whole brand, the igrox.com domain, and my social media followings, uh, just let me know. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of work. And um, so just check it out if you want. Um, if you wanna, you can make me, you can, t you can text me on uh, either on Instagram or you can look me up on, uh, just send me a message here on Udemy and we can get in touch. Perhaps if you wanna buy it, I can give you the keys so that you can hopefully, you know, scale it up to, to what you're capable of doing. I wasn't probably that good, but anyways, I learned from it. I'm just 22 years old, so I feel like I've got tons and tons to learn from and um, perhaps maybe I will, I will create something better in the future. But anyways, right now I'm focusing on, on other things. I'm really focused on marketing and providing uh, uh, consulting services for that and also for, for my family business. So having said that, I'll see you next lecture. I hope that was useful so that you have learned my experience with iGrowX.com. All right, so in this lecture, I wanted to share with you real quick a study conducted by Allied Advisors who I'm shout out and thanks for uh, having created such an amazing uh, visual representation of the, the differences between a vertical and an horizontal SaaS. Okay, we have already t talked about uh, a, the business model difference that said that, uh, you know, a vertical SaaS um, is specific for an industry vertical, as we've said, it's just for an industry vertical, just does everything for that industry vertical. Okay, from accounting to, to CRM, so on and so forth. Whereas we got the horizontal that do a single function for a variety of industry, okay, for multiple, multiple uh, industries, verticals, okay. So that's the business model difference. But then we see so many other differences, which are the target market, the competitive landscape, marketing efforts, capital efficiency for IPO and growth act prospects. These are really, really important for you to know if you want to start your SaaS business, perhaps it's the most important slide that you will ever see in this course, perhaps in the in you know everything you will find out there on the internet, because this is really important. Like once I saw this slide and learned about it, I was mind like really it was mind blowing to me. And uh, and so let's go through the mark. The target market difference is that the vertical SaaS has got a relatively smaller TAM due to, of course, a focus on a specific vertical, and that's quite understandable. Whereas a, an horizontal SaaS has got a large, large TAM. So TAM stands for those one who didn't know, a total addressable market. So it basically represents how much market they can, they can capture. Okay, how big is the market? Is the, mar is the market this big? or is the market this big, okay? So that would be the market for a vertical SaaS, whereas this would be the market for the horizontal SaaS. Now, it doesn't mean that it's better to have a, a higher TAM business, you know, because if you have a higher TAM, it will be, it will mean that there's more competition and higher TAM, you know, doesn't mean higher revenue, okay? Or a higher market share, because of course you need to deal with other competitors, okay? So usually a smaller TAM is better and you will see why. In this case, um, the competitive landscape, that's what I'm talking about. Fewer established players for the vertical SaaS. And there's really a, an evolution, you know, startups continue to enter. And uh, that's much, much different compared to the market dominated by large players of the horizontal SaaS. So it's more like uh, stagnating, you know, it's it's got high barriers to entry. And so people is really uh, struggling to, to create new SaaS, uh, to create new business in, in, this, in this regard, okay? And this is the reason, 
which you will see in the, the next point, which is the marketing efforts are huge for the horizontal SaaS. You got a higher median SNM, which stands for so, uh, sales and marketing, to revenue ratio of 41%. So the SNM to revenue ratio basically says that out of, let's say, $100 uh, million dollars that uh, um, a SaaS business has, uh, you know, is able to earn, 41.1 million are just spent on sales and marketing so that's the, 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 the amount that they spend to acquire customers which is a lot like 41 percent is a lot and because then you need to cater all of the other expenses okay uh, okay yes softwares do not uh, require as much expenses as products do that's quite clear but still 41 percent is, is a lot because you still have to add many many other costs that uh, will make the the profit okay the the bottom line very very slim compared to a medium sales and ma and marketing uh, to revenue ratio of 19 percent which is 22 percent less than this it's totally totally different you see so we got um we got a, a much smaller cost structure than the horizontal SaaS, okay? And again, the capital efficiency for IPO is different, you know? Vertical SaaS is a usually a lot more capital efficient, and it's usually better for mid-market mid funds, which are easier to find than larger funds who can fund to IPO at a larger exit. So uh, for an horizontal SaaS, okay, it's already more difficult to even exist in as an horizontal SaaS, but then it's even more difficult to exit as a company because uh, um, you know only larger funds are usually more interested towards uh, per, to buying you out. So if you are doing if you're planning for an exit, it's usually easier to to plan for a vertical SaaS exit than a horizontal. Okay, and it usually requires a lot more capital to get an IPO. So we'll be looking for more uh, investor funds. So that is definitely much more of a hassle. But it, you know if you could do that, that there's a usually a bigger time so that could be also a great and then you'll see the growth prospects is that faster growth prospects with increasing customer preferences for tailored offerings and growing opportunities to upsell so that's the thing okay you got a lot more growth prospect for the vertical SaaS than the horizontal SaaS because of course you can do a lot more um, custom made features for those for those target customers that you've got because you know those customers very well you know you know what they want you know what they will need in the future so that you can really create something catered to them and you can have a lot of opportunity to up to opportunities to upsell upsell is basically selling something else okay so you, you sell this but then you can also sell that you know so you can increase your uh, your lifetime value of that customer you can increase your your revenue overall so that is usually the best thing to to have whereas with the horizontal says there's a moderate to strong growth prospect okay it's definitely not as strong and uh, as the vertical says but it definitely has really high SM snm costs and Yes, they are usually offset by a large TAM, but it's difficult, difficult to scale at the beginning because really that I have had this experience with iGrox.com. I've tried building a SaaS. It, I mean, I'm, I managed to do that, but the problem was that I built an horizontal SaaS and I was not able to, to scale because I could not really find my target customer. Like it was meant for nearly everyone out there. It was a revenue management uh, sorry, it's a review management uh, uh, software that allowed companies to uh, send review requests to their uh, to their customers through SMS and emails. So that was would increase their their amount of uh, reviews every single day, and of course increase the social proof and increase the revenue. But it was so difficult for me to scale because I could not create a tailored offer for each and every. Uh, Vert industry vertical okay it was like okay who am i going to sell well i can sell to restaurants i can sell to gym owners to auto dealers to dentists to hotels to bnbs you know i could sell to anybody yet i didn't sell to anybody because um because it was so difficult for me to market i wanted to bootstrap it by the way if you want to bootstrap this thing you gotta go with a vertical because it is so much as i said uh more capital efficient in 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 general generally whereas with the horizontal SaaS, it requires a lot of capital initial capital from your side and also external capital later on as you scale so really like start thinking what you want to build if you're thinking about building a SaaS, you can build an mvp for 
less than $2,000, which I did in uh, in my experience with igrox.com. You can check it out, by the way. Uh, by the way, I'm still I'm selling the software. You know, if if you're if you're interested, if you're interested, let just let me know. Um, I'm I'm willing to sell. But uh, but anyways, uh, as I'm said, I've said you just really have to focus before and before even starting your SaaS. If you're thinking about starting a SaaS and say, okay, these are the pros of doing a, a vertical SaaS. These are the cons, and these are the pros of horizontal, and these are the cons. So. You see what perhaps fits you more. If you got uh, a huge, uh, a huge wallet, then uh, you know. If you got a big pile of money, then you would go perhaps even thinking about the horizontal says. Usually, it's got a, um, a, a larger term, and so if you got more, uh, you know, uh, funds. You, you can you can survive there perhaps even thrive in a horizontal sense whereas if you're bootstrapping if you got low ca- less capital you can go with a vertical SaaS okay and uh, well you should go with the vertical SaaS now I'm nobody to <laughs> I'm no one to suggest you that you are and uh, much more qualified than me probably so so yeah just um, just have a look yourself list down the pros and cons and I'll see you in the next lecture all right so in the next series of lectures we're gonna talk about the freemium model, the customer acquisition cost, the lifetime value, and the churn rate, okay? Now let's get started with the freemium model in this lecture. And as you will see, the freemium model is something that most of the SaaS business adopt, and it basically consists of offering a free trial, and then uh, either switching into a paid subscription, or just use a free version like the case of Spotify, that you have uh, a Spotify free, that I guess most of one, most of you are, are are aware of and perhaps using. Well, I, I still use Spotify free. I don't really care about having some ads. Um, to be honest, I I do, but I do feel that those ads are a bit annoying sometimes. But I I still use that Spotify free plan. I I I think I will I will turn into uh, the premium anytime soon. But uh, um, but right now I'm still fine with the Spotify free. Anyways, and then it, what you see, then you can go to the Spotify premium, which is nine ninety nine per month. And um, yeah, you you of course get good premium uh, features so that you can shout, you can shuffle play. You don't have any any ads. You can have unlimited skips, whereas on the on the Spotify free that you can only have three to four skips, which of course is a little bit annoying. And then you can also listen offline, play and track, and higher you have a higher quality of audio. And that's basically what the free um, the the free plus premium subscription is about. But then there's the freemium, which is also about have, offering a 14 days free trial, whereas when there where people can no longer um, access to the paid plan sorry they cannot access to the to the to the 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 software unless they switch the paid plan okay so many businesses do this and to be honest i think that is the best thing to do if you want to kind of force the conversion of course it depends on the competition because if the competition is able to offer that for free then of course it's it, it it's for it's more difficult for you to have that leverage okay but anyways let's just go through this so you have a free trial then you go and become a subscriber, and uh, you once you subscribe, you're going to upgrade to premium, and you're going to plan and renew. You're going to renew the plan. Okay, that's the thing. So you get into a free trial, you upgrade to premium, and then you're going to renew the plan the month after the month, and that is what is going to increase the lifetime value, which is, by the way, what we're going to see in the next lecture. CAC stands for customer acquisition cost, and it basically tells you how much it costs you to acquire a customer nowadays. Okay, so right now, how much is it costing me to acquire a customer? And this is basically the formula. Okay, so it is a salary plus overhead plus paid ads plus tools divided by the number of new customer that you have got. Okay, so it is not only paid ads for as most of you believed and as I also believed before, I thought it was just about paid ads divided by new customers, but that's not it. It is not only new marketing, like it's, it's SG&A, so you also have uh, um, generals and uh, expenditures, so you have salaries from all the from all of the the company members employees so you got an overhead so rent uh, any kind of overhead in that regard and then you got paid ads so all relates to marketing and then you have the tools so you have everything that all the cost of doing business divided by the number of new customers and that will define your cac okay you want to keep ideally the cac as little as possible 
the lowest as possible. The lower the cat, the lower the CAC, the more profitable the business will be if your LTV is high. Okay, of course, if your LTV is let's say a thousand dollars, then you're you're able to spend until the thousand dollars in CAC in acquisition in order to be profitable. Once the, the minutes you start to have a CAC higher than LTV, so let's say a thousand one hundred dollars of CAC, then that's the moment where you where your where, where your business will turn upside down and start to become unprofitable and eat your profits. Okay, so you want to keep ideally your CAC as little as possible and you need to find ways to do that. You need to engineer a way to keep your salary low, your overhead low, paid head, paid as little head as possible and also be efficient in terms of, of tools and all the cost of doing business. So you want to start really small, try to get as many organic uh, customers as possible. So by spending as little as possible and um, yeah, try to get a new customer like that. And once the LTV will be uh, high, you can then start, to, you can spend more in order to acquire the customer. That is ultimately the, uh, the holy grail. Companies like ClickFunnels have mastered this. They have such a high LTV, such a high lifetime value. So the customers pay like $200 per month for like two years, that is around like uh, five thousand dollars around, you know, and that allows the, the company to spend. You know, I'm just making it up. I don't, I don't think it's five thousand. Perhaps it's less, but let's make it like they're willing. They're able to spend even a thousand dollars to acquire the, acquire the customer because because they know that uh, on average a lifetime value of a customer is around a thousand to two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollars. Okay, so. Uh, of course, the higher the LTV, the more the, the more freedom you have to spend, okay? And that is the best thing to do usually. But of course, in order to increase the LTV, you need to have a really good offer, you need to have a really good software, really good product, okay? So uh, it's not easy. In the next lecture, we're going to look at LTV. So we're going to find out what this lifetime value is. LTV stands for lifetime value, and it is so important to get it with the CAC for your SaaS business because it will allow you to understand um, really what is going to is going on and how profitable you can become and how much you are going to charge to your customers and how much you're willing to spend to acquire a customer, okay? And then you're gonna have a customer lifetime value which is really dependent on the type of customers you have because as you can see on the left-hand side, you have 20% of non-profitable customers which uh, they are the most annoying ones. Usually they don't want to spend anything, plus they give you so many hassles. Whereas on the, on the middle of the bell curve, you have the 60%, which are the profitable customers. And on the right hand side, to the far right, you got the very profitable customers of the 20%. They are the ones we, need, we should target. They are not easy to get, but they are the ones who are willing to spend more. They have the, higher, they have the highest income of the three. So, um, Really, they are the ones that they are going to really fuel our business. And ideally, if we could get as many um, as many customers that are profitable to the right side, um, the more our business will thrive. So that is our that is our aim. We want to increase the profit contribution of the customer over time. Okay, so we want to do that by increasing the price per month. Okay, but also by extending the months that they are gonna stay with us, okay? So that we really create a huge long-term relationship. That is the ultimate goal that we have for our SaaS. We're not doing it for a quick buck. It's not like a real estate deal that you're going to buy your house or sell your house and you're trying to make a you know profit from a one-time sale. This is a long-term relationship. You want to build something for the long-term, okay? And then once you have a really high customer lifetime value LTV, you will have ability to spend more to acquire the customer and that is such a good thing to do okay next we will see the churn rate the churn rate is very simple it represents the percentage of people that have dropped at the end of the month okay at the end of the month you can also have the churn rate for the end of the year so it's again a percentage and as we can explain from this uh, very funny image it is the amount of people that either switch to a competitor or like they stop using the software, uh, like the kind of software all, all together. So they're not even going to another competitor. So like the right hand side is the guy that uh, really stop doing what he's doing. And the guy on the left is switching to another competitor. Okay. So 
that is exactly it. You want to reduce the churn rate as much as possible via loyalty programs, by having a really good customer support, by providing as much value as possible. That will, you know, by having a lower churn, ideally your pr business again will thrive because you more people will stay in. So, because of course you will get a lot of people, let's say every single month you get a hundred people in that are new, but you have like 20 people churning, 30 people churning, so 30 people that are dropping. Um, that is, of course, not good. That is not, by the way, the percentage. You don't make the percentage based on the new people, okay? You make the percentage based on, on the people that are still existing. So let's say you have uh, you have your 1,000 customers, okay? And um, every single must, month, 50 churn, that is going to be a, a five, sorry, that is going to be a 0.5% um, 0 .5 churn rate, okay? And that's that's basically what it is. You can, uh, um, it's it's a really simple formula, you can find it on online, but that's, I just wanted to give you a visual representation because to me that makes it, um, that, that represents it really nicely. So you want to avoid people switching to other competitors, so you need to have a really good value proposition. And hopefully, like, hopefully we don't even want them to stop using our service altogether because they don't see value, okay? So yeah, I hope that was useful. See you in the next lecture and hope that you're getting a lot of value in this, in this course.